What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and we are here today with our, um, this is gonna be the week 9 battle for the LBA. A little behind in these uploads, but I definitely wanted to get them up because I had some fantastic matches. Of course, week 9 was against the Chattanooga Chestnuts. I really had my work cut out for me. I decided to go into this match with a Specs Rotom build here. And I believe he just predicted me to switch out right there, but seeing how much damage that Sludge Bomb did and on top of the Life Orb, you definitely know that he's got to be Specs. I mean, not Specs, but Life Orb and Offensive, rather, excuse me. But of course, I'm Specs and I'm faster, so I can't outspeed. Uh, and even Melodic doesn't really like taking a Specs Shadow Ball, especially after a special defense drop. But unfortunately, that's really hacked in his favor because it gives him the competitive boost. And now he has a plus two special attack with which to use Scald. So, not a great situation there. I'm going to bring in Venusaur to take the Scald or probably Ice Beam. He does go straight for Scald, probably just fishing for a burn on anything. And I was like, please don't get burned, please don't get burned. But of course you get burned because it is Scald. 30% translates into roughly 80% of the time, apparently, with the Scald burns. Uh, but I did take that plus two Scald better than I thought I did, than I thought I would, excuse me. So, that's going to, of course, indicate a more defensive melodic. And I'm just going to stand here and use Synthesis. I wanted to check to see if he had Mirror Code. And my HP was really, really low for Mega Venusaur. Um, and so I do get the valuable information that he does have Mirror Code, so that's really good. Uh, this means that if I want to, I can just switch out of here and not deal with it. But what I choose to do is just put it to sleep. Uh, I can. He might have Sleep Talk, but now, because I was planning on him bringing Mirror Code, I can attack him without fearing the retaliation of Mirror Coat as much, unless he just wakes up on the same turn. And then he's playing a gambling game on whether or not I'm going to switch out and attack, or whether or not he's going to wake up and use Mirror Coat. It forces it into a nice little 50-50 situation there. And I was worried about his Gudra being a Sap Sipper, but seeing that he's not immune to my attack here, that definitely means that he's gooey. Uh, and I'm okay with that. Venusaur is not too worried by Ice Beam from Gudra. But that did a lot of damage, so he's definitely an offensive Gudra, and I really needed to see how much a Sludge Bomb would do to him. For the most part, Venusaur was a really good overall wall for his team, except for uh, like his psychic types like Espeon and such. And of course, then there's Charizard, so that's a thing. Here I did go for Sludge Bomb, though again I wanted just to see how much damage it would do to Gudra. And that's able to do a really nice amount to Charizard on the way in. Uh, considering that Charizard X is a little bit more bulky, on the physical side versus the special side compared to Charizard Y. I was pretty pleased by that. Um, I did not want him to set up for on me for free, so I went for another Sludge Bomb. I could have gone for Synthesis just to heal off some of that burn damage, but I, I wanted to force him to use Flare Blitz and then KO himself. That's what I wanted to happen here. So he's at a pretty low range of HP. I go out in the Black Tread, the Dawn Fan here, just to hopefully, hopefully he wouldn't reason he would just attack and he would take the Rocky Helmet damage. And that's exactly what happened, so that works out pretty well. Um, I brought Don Fan, the defensive Don Fan rather, instead of Judge Tread, specifically for uh, Charizard X, whom I figured I could live two hits and force him to take the Rocky Helmet damage with my sturdy ability. Uh, Gudra comes in and surprises me by going straight for a Draco Meteor. I thought he was just going to go for Ice Beam. And that sucks because I lose Don Fan. But that's okay because I do get to put on the offensive pressure with my Weavile, with whom I completely overpredict, and I go for a low kick, and he stays in, and he goes for another Draco Meteor. So if I had just gone for Icicle Crash, Gudra would be dead, and I would not have a minus one speed Weavile at, and eh, maybe like a third HP. That was not a, a good look at all. I wasn't sure if I outsped even at the minus one, because Gudra only has like a mediocre speed level. And at minus one, or minus two special attack, I felt very safe switching in Togekiss, even with the possible Ice Beam. I knew he might switch in Roserade, but uh, I figured I could take a, an attack from Roserade better than I actually could. I went for Nasty Plot here when I really should have just gone for the attack. And I barely live. That's just because of my investment there. I wanted to have enough special defense to live. What I thought he was going to bring was a defensive Roserade for Spike and Toxic Spike stacking. But that investment does allow me to live the uh, Roserade Sludge Bomb, even with the Life Orb being invested there. So, here he proves that uh, my defensive investment will be my downfall, though, because he's able to outspeed Togekiss. Uh, if I had just gone for the attacking move right there, this would have been such a better situation. 
we're going to go out into my Darmanitan here. I am Life Ward, but I didn't really want to take unnecessary recoil damage. And of course, he could switch out into his Terrakian or something like that. And so I just decided to go straight for Rock Slide. I would have the chance for the flinch. Um, and then if he did decide to switch out into something, I could possibly get neutral cover damage on it there as well. Um, unfortunately, with the burn pressure this whole battle, Venusaur's HP is just going to be way too low to handle Terrakian. Uh, if I had not gotten burned, then I would have been at a lot higher HP level. Terrakian is unfortunately very, 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 very scarfed. And he's going to hit not one, not two, not even three. Uh, he's going to hit four scarf stone edges in a row. That's just awesome. I don't know how many, the last time I was able to hit that many stone edges in a row. Uh, so he's able to hit all these stone edges over and over and over. Do I hear five? Do I hear five stone edges in a row? I'm going to make an attempt here. Uh, he didn't want to press his luck with the five stone edges in a row. And so I just went straight for low kick, hoping that I could take out the track in if he missed. But seeing how pitiful damage I do against the Avalug, which is actually pretty impressive that Avalug took that that well. Avalug is quite heavy. Uh, I know that this match is going to be, as Joey says, a snack wrap. So, I did enjoy this match. I I feel like the the plays there, I could have played a little better, especially with Topekiss. I kind of threw Topekiss away in the mid game there. And getting Venusaur burned so early was pretty unfortunate. But at the same time, it was quite a marvel to see that many Stone Edges connect. I know the Chattanooga Chestnuts, a fantastic team with a great coach. But uh, they had a little bit of a rough season, so I think that was his one of his first victories in the season. So I, I definitely played interestingly there, if nothing else. But I'll be getting up the rest of my LBA matches for you guys to see. And of course, we'll see if we're in the playoffs or not. But uh, we're going to keep on trying our best. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye now.